Terrence Ali with the sombrero. Didn't put on a pair of boxing gloves until he was 18 years old, late by most standards, and here he is fighting the revered Julio Cesar Chavez for the world title. The thing about Ali, even at 32, and with all of the experience, he remains hungry. And here is El Campeon, Julio Cesar Chavez, returning to the scene where he battered Hector Macho Camacho last September. Chavez just 14 wins shy of 100, and at this rate, averaging an amazing seven fights a year, he could reach the century mark without a loss by the summer of 95. But he recently changed his stance, saying he wants to reach 93 wins without a loss, and then retire. That would break the record for an undefeated career. On the subject of an undefeated record, Chavez says, I could not bear the thought of losing because it would hurt my family. Cesar Chavez, better than a 20 to 1 favorite, always seems to have the home court advantage wherever he fights, brings out a, such a feeling of pride and nationalism from his countrymen, and has so many loyal fans who follow him everywhere. Tonight, no exception. We go to the tail of the tape. Chavez at 30 is two years younger than Ali, who turns 33 in June. The height is all even. Chavez at 140, Ali 139 and a half, and a three and a half inch reach advantage for the challenger to the WBC rules. Ten point must system, three scoring judges, no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule, only the referee can stop the fight, and the fighter cannot be saved by the bell except in the last round. So here at the Thomas and Mack on the campus of the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, set for the second of our boxing triple header, the WBC Super Lightweight Championship, Julio Cesar Chavez and Terrence Ali. The introductions from Jimmy Lennon, Jr. in which he proudly represents. At this time, we ask you to rise for the singing of the national anthem of Mexico. It is my pleasure to present to the microphone the talented singing and film star of Mexico. Please welcome Pedro Fernandez. Mexicanos al grito de guerra El acero apresta y el gridón y retiemble en su centro la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón. Y retiemble en su centro la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón. Siño padre a tus cielos de oliva de la paz del arcángel divino que en el cielo tu eterno destino por el de Mas se osare un extraño enemigo Profanar con sus plantas su suelo Y en su patria querida que el cielo Un soldado en cada hijo te dio Un soldado en cada hijo te dio Mexicanos al grito de guerra El acero apresar y el vino 
servidor y defiende en su centro la tierra al sonor del del cañón y retiende en su centro la tierra al sonor rugir del cañón ¡Viva México! ¡Viva! 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 Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to our second world title main event brought to you by Don King Productions and King Vision in association with SET Pay-Per-View and The Mirage. This bout is sanctioned by the World Boxing Council, the President Jose Suleiman, the Supervisor John Morris, along with the Nevada State Athletic Commission Chairman Dr. Elias Ghanem. Introducing the judges at ringside. Horacio Castilla, Chuck Jumper, and Chuck Williams. Now presenting the referee in charge of this world title bout, Carlos Pandilla. All right, fans, here we go with the WBC Super Lightweight Championship of the World scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. Introducing to you first the challenger on my right fighting out of the blue corner. He enters the ring wearing red and black trunks, fighting out of Linden, New Jersey, by way of Georgetown, Guyana. He weighed in at 139 and one half pounds. His record, 50 wins, seven losses, two draws, with 21 wins coming by way of knockout. He is the undisputed number one ranked super lightweight contender in the world. Introducing the challenger, Terrence Ali. And his opponent across the ring on my left is the five-time world champion in three weight divisions, really needing no introduction the world over. He enters the ring wearing blue trunks with white trim, fighting out of Culiacan, Sinaloa, Mexico. His weight was an even 140 pounds. His tremendous record represents the longest undefeated streak in boxing today, with 86 victories, no defeats, 74 wins by way of knockout. Introducing one of boxing's pound for pound greatest, the WBC super lightweight champion of the world, Okay, who's the chip again? Chip again, so the chip again, sir. Okay. Okay, Chavez, Ali, you're going to box for 12 rounds. You know the rules of box. Avoid using any kinds of foul. <coughs> Don't throw punches during the break or after the bell. Any question? Okay, seconds come out fighting. All right. The odds at the bell for this one, 24 to 1 for Julio Cesar Chavez, the WBC Super Lightweight Champion. Terrence Ali, as we begin round one, comes running right out at Chavez. Well, if it was a track meet, he, uh, he has an edge already. But that's not what does it for Chavez. You've got to be there a long time, and you've got to chop some wood to beat this guy. He was very adamant about one thing. He said Chavez can't fight going backwards, but no one's been able to back him up successfully anyway. And that's what he wants to do. He wants to make him stay backwards, jab in his face, and work counter punches and punch. Ali always seems to wind up in fights he's not supposed to and expected to roll over, but he usually doesn't. He almost always gives a good showing. He's been in there with some big punchers as well. Chavez content to let him just shoot out all he's got. He hasn't landed one punch yet. He must have thrown 30 or 40 already. Has Terrence Ali. Chavez just watching him. And the chance of Chavez from this crowd here at Thomas and Mack. Ali told us, here's what he thinks of Chavez. He says, I can't see what the world sees in this guy. He has no guard, doesn't protect himself. His opposition makes him look good. The only real tough he's ever had was against Meldrick Taylor. 
He's not a big puncher and made mistakes against Greg Haugen. He won't not be out because I've got a good chin. I'm underrated since Ali. I'm going to back him up as you guys pointed out, fighting every round, work the body, go downstairs, upstairs, combinations, I'm ready to be champion. Well, right now he's doing what he said he was doing, but I'll tell you what, he's underestimating the power Chavez has. He's very damaging punches, and his defense is very subtle, but it's there. Well, you're going to get a whole university training of education and why Chavez is here. Once you fight him, you understand why he's here. So this is just starting out. Chavez is content to just let it go by, just letting... Letting Ali shoot his boat every once in a while. One little punishing joke to show him that he's in there with Chavez. Chavez so methodical, relentless. There he goes with the right hand that staggered Ali. Terrence Ali's a man with a lot of pride and good conditioning. He probably can last out this round, but I'll tell you what, he found out that Chavez can't punch. There's another one right to the face. That, that long paragraph was punctuated by one punch and explained the whole thing to Terrence. He says, oh, I see what they're talking about now. And his legs still aren't under him. He's not 100%. That right hand is still having its effects. Terrence Ali buckling with that straight right by Chavez. And Chavez inviting Ali in. The thing about Chavez is he, he fights the way he wants to. If he wants to let the guy go for a while, he lets him go. He wants to knock him out, he knocks him out. I mean, this guy is right now at the top of his form. He is pound for pound the best fighter in the world. And I'll tell you, as soon as you start looking for that right hand on the chin, he's going to dig that left hook under your ribs. And now you have another problem to worry about. Some say Pernell Whitaker is the best pound for pound. Others say Terry Norris. Is it valid? Is it fair to describe somebody as pound for pound the best in the world? I think it is after, oh, he's got him staggered again. At the bell. At the bell. He, Chavez gave him something to think about in the corner. Pound for pound is something I think you give a fighter after a very long and honorable career. Not in the middle of it. You're throwing the shots and you're standing still. You're not looking for my shots coming back. You have to look for the shots coming back. Have you throw your combinations? Move the head. Are you move okay? Head. Step okay. away from him. Always protect, okay? He's okay. Then move away from him. Don't be okay. a gentleman with this guy. Every combination, come back to the jab. Bam, bam, bam. Right back to the jab. Bam, bam, bam. Right back. Let's take a look at that one punch. Just one economic punch. Whoop, that right hand. Right on the button. And look at the number that Ali does. It's a miracle he didn't go down. Miracle of balance and a miracle of gravity. And here's the end of the round where it looks like it's all but finished. The bell sounds, okay, and okay. then there's a little action. Whoops. He's sharp. He's very sharp, and he's always accurate on the money. Yep. He gives you one of those shots and take that back to the corner and think about it for a while. Round two, scheduled for 12. I wonder how much his plan will differ now. Will he still come at him as hard, as fast, with as many punches? Will he want to use the jab more? Maybe be a little smarter defensively. Terrence Ali cannot fight the fight he fought in the first round. There's a left, crisp hook by Chavez, now stalking Ali against the ropes. He looks like he wants to end this now. Yeah, it, it, it's, got to, it's got to begin to occur to Terrence Ali that there is no way to fight this guy. He's in way over his head here, and it's Chavez's call when he's going to finish this. Now Ali talking to Chavez as Chavez hits him. That isn't going to help him. Well, Terrence has a good attitude. we got to give him that. But I'll tell you what, he is in a world of trouble and a hell of a fight right now. Terrence Ali, 57-2 with 21 knockouts, rated number one across the board, but in the fight of his career here tonight. Minute gone by in round two. Chavez says his main objective now is to go 93-0. Pretty good right there by Ali. He also wants his 25th title fight without a loss and six titles in six different weight categories. And that could come September 10th against Whitaker. He just threw a couple of nice combinations, Terrence Ali, and he hit Chavez with most of them, but that could be the worst thing that could have happened to him. But you got to admire Terrence Ali. He's in here to do his best. He's not running like the other guys do. He's not protecting. He's trying to gamble with Chavez. It, it could only end one way this way, but at least he's giving it a shot. I admire him for that. Combination to the head by Chavez. Chavez going to the body into the head. What beautiful punches. Watch the economy of moves. 
He doesn't waste any motion. He doesn't waste any energy. He's extremely efficient, head and body in combination, and all of a sudden, the fight's over. And perhaps no better finisher in the sport of boxing. Chavez is respectful of Terence Ali. He knew he'd come out fighting. There's a combination to the head by Ali doing basically no damage. Ali against a guy who has an abnormally thick cranium. That was discovered about four years ago during a CAT scan. Well, I'll tell you, the fight is really taking form here, but Ali's doing whatever he can, shuffling, talking, hands up in the air, whatever he can to pump himself up to keep him in this fight. But his defense better start improving or he's gonna be in a serious, serious position. Well, he's starting to wear out now, and it has happened to everyone that's fought him. As the rounds go by, you start to get more and more tired, and as the pain starts to build up, and finally, you just can't move in front of this guy. Chavez takes care of him. And round two in the books. Let's take a look at, at Chavez. Watch what makes him pound for pound the best. The economy of the moves. The, the pinpoint punching accuracy. I mean, if he wanted to push on an attack right there, he could have finished it. And he, he takes his time. He wants to get his work in. He's just an incredibly economic fighter. He never gets excited. He waits. He sees his opening and like that. He's on it. It's just incredible. You know, he also standing up between uh, rounds. Last time he stood up because his back was hurting him. And he sees, he thinks it's much more comfortable for him. Here, here goes the track meet again. Ali uh, coming out to uh, receive his punishment as fast as he can. Three. Those are the ones that take your legs. That's the one that not only takes your legs, it takes your arms, it takes everything. All the air in your body just says, excuse me, I'm out of here. That's what he keeps telling me he's going to do when he fights Pernell Whitaker. He says, I don't want to aim for his head at all. First five rounds, I'm going to hit him from underneath. I'm going to hit under his tongue. He says, hey, everything's coming from underneath the first five rounds. So that should be an interesting big time fight. That is pinpoint precision. Under the tongue. Yeah, that's the first time I ever heard that. I said, you, I, I said, you're good, Chavez. I don't think you're that good. I've never seen anybody punch under the tongue. Although if anyone could do it, yeah. it'd probably be him. Yes. Despite Chavez's success, still lives in violence and drug-infested Culiacan in the state of Sinaloa in Mexico. Grew up one of ten children in that city. Refuses to leave because that's where his family and friends are. Likes to be surrounded by people and for a man so fearless in the ring. He actually is afraid to be alone. Three hooks in a row and a right hand to cap it. And Ali still comes back. You got to admire him. Another one. Oh. What a left hand oh, by no. Chavez. And oh. a combination to the head by Chavez. There goes the mouthpiece, I believe, of Terence Ali. You believe correctly. Terence Ali the... may be too game for his own good right here. And now Carlos Padilla will stop it momentarily. They need the mouthpiece. They got to clean it up first and then return it to Ali. Well, they gave him a nice welcome rest there. Padilla threw that thing like he was thrown to home plate. No wonder they couldn't find the thing. Not too fair on his part. Something that Chavez is doing on the inside too. He's sitting there, Terrence is throwing his punches. He rips an uppercut up and then the right hand right over the top. There it is again. And not that Ali didn't land a few in there, because he did. He landed a couple of combination there on Chavez. Just makes him matter. There's another good shot by Ali after a barrage by Chavez. Ali is taking the punches too flush. Not rolling with him, not slipping him, and he's not putting his hands up. In combination, he's throwing, but he's just leaving himself wide open. He's Chavez. just wearing out. Chavez, wearing out. excuse me, Ferdy does admit he's not as fired up for Ali as he was before the Greg Haugen fight, obviously, with over 130,000 people in Mexico. He's a guy that fights every five or six weeks. I mean, you know, it's almost like going to the grocery store. Oh, huh? I think I'll go down and knock somebody else out. He has to come up with it. The big fights are the ones he looks for now. These are the kind of fights that he comes in, hones himself, keeps them sharp, and that's it. Goes home. Left hand by Terrence Ali. 
And a high left. Oh, another left by Chavez. What a chin on Terrence Ali. And hit back he comes. Again, the non-stop action by Chavez. Ali taking a lot of punishment. That's it for round three. Let's go over to Montel Williams. Steve, I'm back here with Pepe Correa's. And, and Lennox is, it came in, he looked real good. He looks really like he's, he's just settled in. I mean, you know, with all the train, the fights that you've trained from Simon Brown, Morris Blocker, Sugar Ray Leonard, you know, what did you do to bring him in at this level? Just to take my time and tell him to relax, take his time in doing things. You know, when I got in camp and every time we would spar, it was just relax, relax, relax. And now, you know, it's soaked in there right now. Do you think the excitement of this has got him a little nervous? Uh, if someone was going to bother him, it would have bothered him in the Olympics. I mean, that was big enough. That's just as big as this. Yeah. Uh, Lennox is as cool as Iceman. You don't have enough to worry about. All right, great. We'll be back. I'm going to go right back to you, Steve. Thank you, Montel. Pepe Carrillo, who predicts a fifth-round knockout for his man Lennox Lewis over Tony Tucker later tonight. Round four, Julio Cesar Chavez uh, saying that his upcoming showdown with Whitaker, a recent illness to his three-year-old son Omar. He's okay now. They thought he had meningitis, but he's all right. He's in excellent condition, thank goodness. And the talk of retirement were preoccupying his mind of late, but you wouldn't know. Well, for the first time, his corner sent him out to finish. Buffalo Martin said, okay, stop fooling around. Get this guy out now. Well, it looks as if he can do it whenever he wants, but Terrence Ellis, you got to give him a lot of credit. Here's a guy who fires back. He didn't just come here to show up. He came to fight. And Bobby Chance makes a good catch of the mouthpiece. But a bad throw to <laughs> of Terrence Ellis. in the third row. Well, your positioning was very awkward, but we tried to save the mouthpiece. Well, it was closer than Carlos Padilla's last throw. Oh, another great right hand by Chavez. Chavez really digging in now. And now a left hook by Chavez. Chavez doubling on the left of going to the body with the uppercuts. Oh, look at that body attack. Another assault by Julio Cesar Chavez. And now Carlos Padilla looking for the mouthpiece. First looked at Bobby Chez, but Bobby flipped it over to the corner. Bobby says, I'm not fighting until September. Don't look at me. Who'd have known I'd have played a role in a fight? And by the way, Bobby, don't shake my hand for at least an hour. <laughs> Cuts by Chavez. Punishing Ali to the body. But Ali comes right back, showing a lot of courage. While he's taking a beating, he's still coming on with his punches. Don't forget, this is not just one way. He's, he's hitting Chavez as well. It's just his punches are not as effective and they're not landing flush. Not only that, the body shots are taking some of the starch out of Terrence Ali's punches. He's, you can see he has to bend over there, another one dug up underneath. And Terrence, again, to his credit, this is a fighter who believes in himself, who trains hard, who gets in condition, and has a lot of pride. He's got a lot of experience. He's been here a long time now, and it's, it's not anything he hadn't seen or felt. So he's giving it the best he can, and you got to admire him for, oh, another hard shot by Chavez. It is the third world title shot for Terrence Ali, trying unsuccessfully for lightweight titles twice. From Georgetown, Guyana, lives in Linden, New Jersey, lived in Brooklyn, New York for seven years. Here goes Chavez again. Look at those left hooks and uppercuts. That's about five hooks and uppercuts, six or seven by now. Boy. And a good right hand there by Ali that got in, but totally unflappable is Chavez. I have to tip my hat to Terrence Ali. Here is no quitting that man. He is 100% man. Less than 30 seconds remaining in the fourth. The chance of Chavez again. Big left there by Chavez. Fortunately for Ali, he, he ducked. Hey, he's standing here and he's fighting with Chavez. That's all you can expect. That's more than we've seen of anybody else coming up here. I got to take my hat off with Bobby Chez to Ali. Terrence Ali showing tremendous heart as we head for the bell. Hey. Come on, Terrence. Here, sit down. Sit down. He's taking them left toes. Watch him. Give him a water bottle. Yeah. In the spit bucket. Yeah, give me. Terrence, Terrence, let me get. 
Just swallow it and let me have it. Listen, Terrence, you're trying to sit inside and trade with him too much. Acomódate mejor, acomódate mejor. Si está el golpe bien puesto. Venga, te lo vas a hacer, lo puedes hacer y lo vas a hacer ahora. Acomódate mejor. Y sube de abajo arriba con esos golpes. Venga. Buffalo saying to him, listen, go down and go over. You're making this thing too hard. Let's get rid of this guy. This guy's too brave. And Chavez said, I'll take care of it. I'll take care of it. He's very confident, uh, is Chavez. And well, he should be. He's won all four rounds and it's been a one way beating. Meanwhile, Chavez continues to stand, getting the instruction from Buffalo Martin, round five. It's been my experience, and we talked about Chavez's old back injury, he might have it again. It's my experience with a back injury that you sit to relieve the tension, not stay. Well, everybody, you know, everybody does what feels good for them, and apparently this guy feels good standing up, so. Can't argue with that. I wouldn't question anything. He no, no. In the back of his trunks is written, to believe is to have power. And I do believe he believes in himself. And I do believe he has power. Creer es poder. Right. He's got a lot of poder. And Terrence Ali having a hard time off shutting it. Now for the first time of the fight, things settling down for a few seconds, but it probably won't last long. You might wonder a little bit because no, Chavez is a notoriously slow starter, that they forced quick pace like this. Would that, would that really be possible to throw him out of his game a little bit? I doubt it, but it's possible. In the meantime, Terrence Ali is still standing there, still throwing a lot of punches. It's not just one or two, he throws them in bunches. And uh, he's not doing bad for the punishment he's received to the body and to the head. It's amazing he can throw punches with that kind of speed. Now Chavez just bobbing and weaving. That can't help his back any. That reminds me of the story with the spider and the fly a little bit. He's looking to suck him in there and get do some damage. Little possum, there's the jab by Chavez. We're seeing everything in his repertoire. Lunging right hand that Chavez smiles at. Chavez seems to have decided to take this round off rather than finish him off because he certainly has been easy on him compared to what he's done up to this point. I actually give Terrence Ali this round so far. So far, he's only about a minute left. What was the last time we saw Chavez actually lose a round? I can't remember. Meldrick Taylor's fight, he was way behind. That I remember. Combination by Ali. Well, he's given this round away. I mean, he's given him a Christmas present. He's hardly thrown anything and, and let Terrence Alley get the brave. Or get braver, because he's brave enough as it is. Part of the problem there is if he gets too brave, that could be the instant knockout that Chavez may be looking for. Less than 30 seconds remaining, round five. Look out, Ali's off balance, and Chavez trying to take advantage. What a turnaround after Ali was winning the round. Yeah, he got too brave and he got too confident. All of a sudden, that Cobra uncorked that punch. And like a shark at the sight of blood. Oh. Final seconds, round five. Back comes Ali. And Chavez finishes with a flurry. I have to take a look at how Chavez just all of a sudden woke up and gave him a wake up call. This is what it's like at the very end of the of the round and he took the round by giving this kind of shellacking to Terrence Ali who'd been doing pretty good. It's amazing he didn't go down Bobby. Take another look you, at that. Again, Terrence Ali start, he started to get lazy. Chavez let him win some round, win part of the round, laid off on his punches, relaxed. As soon as he relaxed, look at him, push him back, whack him, timing and the shots are perfect. Well, we said at the outset, as we enter round six, that Ali always finds himself in tough fights against undefeated fighters, champions, always gives a good showing of himself. Tonight, no exception. Chavez knocks him down.
Chavez mad because they sent him to the neutral corner. He's gone to the wrong corner. Well, I think it's all over now. Yeah. Terrence Ali's is doing his best, but I think he's not going to make it. Ali's in all kinds of trouble. Ali's saying, don't wave it off. It's not over. He was fighting back. I'll tell you what. He was fighting back, and he stopped it while he was in the middle of a combination. I don't know if that's uh, something that he should have done, but he no, did he do it. Indecisive. That did not seem kosher. Carlos Padilla stopping the fight when Ali was coming back. Yeah, he, he, he reacted too fast. He, he was indecisive. He went to do it. Then he didn't do it. Then Ali, Ali's coming back. You can't stop it then. And by that time, Chavez pulled the cork and said, OK, I won. I think it was influenced by Chavez's yeah. dramatics at the other corner. And he could have been punished by that because the fight's really not over until the referee says it. So, I mean, he's, he was welcome to go jump on the rope, but the other guy could have gone over and popped him just as good. There was serious indecision on the part of Carlos Padilla and something that we've always taken a look at. The under and over for this fight, the will go won't go, was five and a half rounds, and we <laughs> missed it by about a minute. <laughs> Well, I don't know about that, Bobby. What I do know is that, that the indecisiveness of the referee caused Terrence Ali to be not to save from a knockout because he lost the fight, but he was on his way to get knocked out. So you can't really argue he was he was like out of it. Right? We're not saying that Ali was on his way to winning this fight, no. But you have to wonder about that judgment. Well, let, let's take a, just keep your eyes on Carlos Padilla. This is a knockdown. This is the first one that got him in trouble. Now, this is not the Carlos Pardilla thing. Let's just watch it. Now, you see that the combinations are, are devastating. When he goes down and, and comes back up, he still is full of fight. He still wants to fight. He's not, he's not completely out on his feet. Then comes the end of the fight, and now is when you take a look at Carlos Pardilla. Keep watching Pardilla now. Well, you see him. He's in the corner. He's hurt. He's getting hit. He's getting punched. He's trying to get away, trying to use the ropes to hold him up. Trying to slip, so, duck, see, but he's but coming back fighting. He starts punching back. Cadilla was said box. He put his hands together, said box. But because uh, because Chavez was on the ropes, he said, "Well, that's enough. Let's put it anyway." Yeah. Because he did put his hands together, said box. Yeah, he did because the guy was coming back. Uh, Terence Ali was coming back to box. However weak, however he was, he was coming back for more. So that was a case of indecisiveness. I think it, it didn't make any difference. He's, he was going to get beat. He's going to get knocked out. But it's one of those things that uh, affects the, the fight game in a little way. It's too bad it happened, but no question about it. Chavez in control the entire time. And if there's any note to people that like Minutia, he sat down between the round that time. So it must have helped him. All right, another great performance by Chavez on the way to a magnificent night in September. Chavez now 87 and 0 with 75 knockouts. And tonight making his 11th defense of the WBC Super Lightweight Championship, a title he won from Roger Mayweather back in 1989. Meanwhile, Terrence Ali. Oh, falling yes, to 58 and 2. But I didn't like the way the referee And did. the end of his eighth I mean, fight you know, winning streak. Stop, Julio Cesar Chavez you won't be, you won't do fight is down, doing it again. Not winning in the middle of an exchange. And we are set for the official announcer. Let's go up to ring announcer Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time. In round number six, referee in charge, Carlos Padilla stops the contest. The winner by way of technical knockout. He is still undefeated and still WBC super lightweight champion of the world, El Gran Campeón Mexicano, Julio Cesar Chavez. Well, you hear the mixed reaction. Of course, the Chavez fans are celebrating, but others are questioning the decision-making of referee Carlos Padilla. Let's take a look at the knockdown first, Bobby. So here you see him, head and body, head and body, comes over the top, digs one underneath, comes back up, right hand, left hook, mixes his punches, head and body in combination, straight around the complete fighter. When you're in trouble, that's a man that's going to finish it. And now the end of the fight. Well, Terrence is back to the corner. He's hurt. He's going to use the ropes to spring off of and help keep him up. He's trying to duck some punches. He's hurt. He's hurt, but he comes out swinging. And Padilla here waves him. He says, box. But because Chavez is already celebrating, he feels compromised because he stepped in prematurely. And you see the reaction on the face of Terrence Ali, the challenger. So here at the Thomas and Mack Center in Las Vegas, ready for post-fight reaction. This could be interesting. Let's go up to the ring of the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco. Was this much harder than you thought it was going to be? Realmente yo estaba haciendo mi pelea. He was taking care of his own fight. 
No quería forzarme demasiado. Yo sabía que yo podía ganar el Lee cuando yo quisiera. Pero hay que reconocer que es, que es muy valiente. Y lo felicito porque aguanta muchos golpes. Was he in doubt about the stoppage? The, the referee seemed in, indecisive. No, realmente el refere para mí no estuvo bien. Ali lo golpeaba bien y me dice que lo golpeaba abajo. He says that he, the referee kept telling him he was hitting Ali low, but he wasn't. Para mí no estuvo bien la pelea, para mí estuvo bien parada. Ali estaba muy, estaba muy lastimado. Ali es muy valiente, pero no tenía con qué ganarme. Y no tenía caso, no tenía caso golpearlo. One last, one last question. He was always standing up. Now he sat down. He sat down. Did that give him the energy? No, no. Me, me, me paré porque mi red. Mi, eh, mi hermano Rodolfo y don Cristóbal me sentaron a fuerzas. Because they made him sit down forcefully. He didn't want to. Quiero decir que esta pelea se le dediqué al señor gobernador de Culiacán, Sinaloa, ingeniero Renato Vega, porque me prometió darle un gran apoyo a todo el deporte en Sinaloa. Una, y también en, en, en memoria de del gran señor que ya se nos fue, don Mario Manuel Cantinflas. Un saludo. Allá en el cielo. Mario Moreno Cantinflas, y un saludo y felicitaciones a todas las madrecitas. Les mando un beso y un abrazo totalmente de México y a mi madre. You caught me with good punches. I saw, I, I, I'm in good, very good shape. I'm in one of the best shape I could. I know where to take everything the had was offer. I'll come on in a later on. The referee stopped the fight premature. What did you think of uh, the referee Padilla stopping the fight? Uh... The referee stopped the fight premature. I was hurt before. He never stopped the fight. All right. When Chavez hit me, I had all my senses. He didn't stop to ask me no question or anything like that. We're now standing. The fight. We're standing in front of uh, Carlos Padilla, but he, it looked like it was a little indecisive. What did you feel about it? No, uh, it just looks like that because in the start of the last round, he got once and he almost uh, went down. So I know he's hurt. He's been hurt all, uh, you know. And I was just waiting, waiting, and he got, uh, you know, more uh, punishment. And when he stepped, step, step into stop, he went forward. That's what. So I said, no, that's it, that's it. That's what I said. All right. Well, uh, it, in, in any so case, you forward. you were losing the fight. You were on the verge of an eye. We can't argue about that. No. Maybe it was indecisive, it's, it's but you over. fought a valiant fight. It's not over until it's over. Well, it's not over until in this case, Terence, Ali time. Ali time. Uh, you, you, Ali did, you did a good, a good, a good show. <laughs> oh, my All right. And we go to, of course, Whitaker now. Oh, Whitaker. 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 Whita